Chapter 5, Rise Up and Go. Going home a few days early seems like a great idea to me, even if we had to blame it on a hurricane. New Hampshire won't be as hot and muggy as New Orleans, that's for sure. And home has a real TV and my PlayStation, and I'll have my friends, and Bandy will have all the familiar places where he sniffs around and does his business. Plus, I won't have to feel guilty about Miss Trissy because she's coming with us. That way, Mom can deal with the old lady while I'm getting ready to go back to school. Perfect. Selfish, maybe. Okay, totally selfish. But I'm so psyched about going home that I get my stuff packed in like five minutes and carry it out to the porch. Excuse me, the gallery. And check with Miss Trissy to make sure she's called for a taxi. Take them an hour at least to fetch us, she explains. They're busy. She's at her little telephone table in the hallway, and her hands are kind of fluttering around, like she's trying to touch something. Invisible things. She's always lo She always looks old, but now she looks kind of sick, too. What's wrong, Grammy? Her ancient wrinkled eyes are wet with tears. Nice, you call me Grammy. Oh, yes, just like your father. Did you know that? That your daddy called me Grammy? Of course you didn't. But why are you crying? The storm, she says, which is her way of saying storm. Always worried my way through that Hurricane Dennis that barely missed us. And now comes along this Katrina. One after another. You get settled from one storm, they come, they comes another. Storm's gonna be the end of me. No, no, don't worry. We'll be fine. You're gonna love New Hampshire, Grammy. Promise. Come on, sit down in your favorite chair and rest until the taxi gets there. I help her, help her settle into the easy chair, but her hands are shaking so bad that she loses her grip, and the cane skitter to the floor, which sets the dog to barking. Bandy, hush! Ain't the wind I'm feared of, she explains. It the water. Water take all of this away like Betsy did and leave me no place to live in my last years. Betsy? Hurricane in 1965, 40 years ago, it flooded this house up to the windowsills. Rising water drove us up into the attic. Imagine me climbing through that little hole in the ceiling. Well, I did. Had to. My husband Henry brought him a little hatchet in case we had to chop through the roof. Then the water went back down and we never did need that hatchet. But we was cleaning out and fixing up for the most part of a year after that storm. Me and Henry. Don't got it in me to go through nothing like that again. I say, on TV they always make it sound worse than it is. Probably it'll blow down a few trees, that's all. The old woman shakes her head sorrowfully. We can't know that child. Nobody knows but the Lord, and he don't, he not saying. Right now, that, right about then, my cell phone rings. Mom again, but the connection is so bad I can barely hear her. There's a problem, she says, her voice all crackly and distant. The call fades away into static, but not before she gives me the bad news, the really bad news. Grammy goes, what's wrong, child? Look like you ate a bug. There's a lump in my throat, not because I'm afraid of the storm, which is probably stupid, but because the promise of going back early has been snatched away, and it makes me more homesick than ever. Delta canceled our flight, I finally managed to explain. They canceled all the flights for the next few days. Mom is trying to get us on standby with another airline, but so far she can't get through. The old woman doesn't seem the least bit surprised. She hums to herself for a while and then gives me a big smile and goes, you say it yourself, Zane Dupree, we gon' be okay. I guess. Today is Saturday, and the storm don't be coming till Monday soonest, right? That's what they say. So we got all of Sunday, Grammy says. Here's what we gon' do. Tomorrow morning we go to church and see what the Lord provide. I must have walked past the new mission Zion Baptist a bunch of times with Bandy and didn't even notice the place because at a glance looked like the rest of the houses in the neighborhood. Just another long, narrow building with white cupboards and a saggy front porch. But if you look closer, there's a little wind vane, kind of steeple, tacked onto the peak of the roof. And a hand-lettering sign is set out on the sidewalk that says, Worship with the Reverend W.B. Daniels, Jr. Pastor, special service today, 11 a.m. Another that Sunday school canceled. Gammy walks to the church on her two canes and won't let me help her. She made me put on my only white shirt and an old tie that belonged to Henry and smells of mothballs. She doesn't approve of my Nikes, but I don't have any dress shoes with me, and her husband's old shoes don't fit, so the Nikes will have to do. 
still she's all got up in a blue satin dress and what she calls her church shoes and a wig that looks kind of purple and a lacy blue hat on top of that which sounds funny when i tell it like that with the wig and all but somehow she looks right like a proper old lady on a sunday morning all fixed up for church a man in a dark suit stands on the steeples outside of the church looking up and down the street checking his watch he's a big dude with shiny dark skin and friendly eyes and gold-rimmed gl reading glasses that hang on a cord around his neck when he catches sight of us his face lights up miss trissy welcome wasn't sure to see you this morning of all mornings he said leaning down to kiss her cheek many of our parishioners have gone already gone i come to sing for my great grandchild i never knew i had she says at all in a burst like she's been saving it up and has to get it out fast as the pastor shakes my hand he sort of looks me over then back and forth between me and him and my great grandmother finally he goes you know what i do see it yes i do in the eyes and in the nose can you sing too mr too young mr dupree did the gift pass to you i shake my head might be he does sing grammy says smiling at me no way am i going to sing in a church and make a fool of myself totally no way okay try going to church in new orleans and not singing they won't let you it's practically against the law not to sing in a church down there it starts right off the bat too pastor daniel reads a few lines of scriptures then he hurries to the keyboard set up alongside the podium and as soon as his fingers touch the keys the whole room is singing this old-fashioned hymn about storm clouds and strong winds and finding the savior and how sweet he is the pastor he's got a big voice that fills the place and soon we're all kind of swaying back and forth in our seats and you don't even have to know the words they're already in the air waiting for you to sing them then at the end of the first chorus the pastor sets off a drum machine changing the beat and suddenly that old hymn turns granny steps or turns into stomping blues rock kind of thing and that's when grammy steps up in the pew and opens her mouth what comes out really floors me because she's got this clear uplifting voice that's almost as big as the pastor's a voice so young and beautiful it makes you want to cry and laugh at the same time coming out of a little old lady like that everybody in the church is clapping together clap da da clap da 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 clap and swaying from side to side shouting tell the lord miss trissy and singing like an echo on the chorus and it's enough to make me want to jump out of the aisle and start dancing like a maniac which of course i didn't i just clap along and maybe sing a bit keeping kind of quiet so nobody will notice my froggy voice that keeps missing notes not that anybody does notice and the nice thing is that when the hymn is over, my great-grandmother takes my hand and holds it like something precious. And that's when I really understand how cool it is that Mrs. Patrice Jackson is still alive in the world for me to know, even if it meant coming all the way to Smellyville to find her. After the one song, Pastor Daniels calms us down and leads us to say the Lord's Prayer. And then he thanks us all for coming and tells us this will be the end of the special service because the time has come to leave. I pray we will all be in attendance next Sunday and that the sun will be shining down and that no harm will have come to us or this ward or this little church. But you heard me right, brothers and sisters. You all must go now this very morning the mayor has issued a mandatory evacuation they called most every church and every pastor to make sure that the word gets out they say in the hurricane may push great wave of water overtopping the levees and flooding the city and some of you are old enough to recall the last time that happened when much of our lower ninth neighborhood was flooded we pray that this hurricane passes us by as so often they do and that the lord's merciful hand will be calm the will calm the waters so harm comes to no one but brothers and sisters make no mistake we must take action as we lift up as we lift our voices in prayer we must lift ourselves from these pews and go out and find transportation pack your bags and leave lock your doors and leave go to family go to friends but go you must bad winds are coming brothers and sisters and the waters may rise go the higher to ground to higher ground go 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 that does it and the church empties until there's no one left but me 
and Grammy and the pastor. Is there no one to carry you, he asks. The old woman shakes her head. Best come with me, he says. We'll make room in the bus.